In this video, I'm going to discuss about uh, the general solution of uh, an equation in uh, sine theta. Okay, so the form, uh, this is uh, what we have to prove. It says that if sine theta is equal to sine alpha, then prove that theta is equal to m pi plus minus 1 to the power m dot means times alpha where m is an integer. Okay, so I've done this, so I want to go step by step. Now, m is an integer. m, you should know, is, when you say integer, it is consist of the negative and the positive integer. So, if you want to write a set of integers, it is from negative infinity to, say, negative 3, comma, negative 2, comma, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. So, you have, and basically, if you want to describe this in words, it means it's all the positive integers, 0 and the negative integers. M is uh, an integer, means all positive, negative, and 0. So, let's get started. So, the first thing that we can do is, this form looks a bit crazy. It uh, is not intuitive. How would you get this, okay, from this equation? So, basically, what we are saying is, if sine theta can be written as sine alpha. Say, uh, an example can be, suppose sine theta is half or 0.5, and uh, 0.5 can be written as, or if you do uh, sine theta can be written as, let me delete this, sine theta can be written as 0.5 is sine of how much? We know 0 0.5 is sine 30, okay, sine 30 or sine pi by 3, uh, sorry, pi by 6 is 30. So, let me show you the, on the calculator. So, this is my calculator. So, menu run. My calculator is in radians, okay. So, if you press sine pi by 6, which is 30 degree, would be 0 0.5, okay. So, I know sine... 30 or sine pi by 6 is 0.5. So, I can write sine theta is sine 30 or sine pi by 6. Then, I can use this formula to write all the solutions of uh, or all the values of theta because any trig function is a periodic function. So, you can have infinite roots of any trig equation. If sine theta is 0.5, theta can be, uh, is repeats infinitely, so as it's a periodic function. Okay, so I'm not going into that detail now. So, the first step that you can do is, if sine theta is sine alpha, this implies, you can take away sine alpha from both sides, I can say sine theta minus sine alpha is equal to zero, this is pretty easy. Okay, now you have to use a formula, which is called the product formula, using the formula of products sine a minus b, this is the formula, we can prove this, is 2 cos c plus d over 2 times sine c minus d over 2. This is a formula. So, we can compare a with theta and b with alpha. So, using that formula, I can write uh, 2 c plus d is theta plus alpha over 2 times uh, sine theta minus alpha over 2 is equal to 0. Now, this is a product of, this is one number and this is also a number. So, if a product of two numbers is 0, what can you say? You can say this is 0 or this is 0. Okay, so that's the next step. So, I say, well, then cos theta plus alpha over 2 has to be 0 or sine, sine theta minus alpha over 2 has to be 0. So, these are the two options. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and this separately. So first we'll focus on this. What, when would cos function become zero? Okay, that's what the question is now. Okay, so I've drawn. This is a cos graph. So cos starts at so this is one and say this is negative one. This is your maximum. And this is your minimum. Hopefully you know how the cos graph looks like. Cos graph starts at maximum, baseline, this is called the baseline, okay, minimum, and this is, so we are 
asking the question, when does this cost graph become zero? So, well, we can say cost becomes zero at pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. Okay, so this is a, this is, this is 90 and this is 270. So, we say now if cos x is zero, we can say x is uh, pi by 2, I have written 1 pi by 2, then you got 3 pi by 2, then you got 5 pi by 2, so it all, it will be 5, 7 and so on. So, this can be written as, you can take the half pi out. So, if you take the half pi out, so, uh, it will be, so, if you want to, uh, if you, I want to explain this, half pi, uh, if you take half pi, so, it will be half pi times 1, then uh, it will be 3 again, so, pi by 2 can be written as half pi times 1. 3 pi by 2 can be written as half pi times 3. 5 pi by 2 can be written as half pi times 5. So, if you look at the numbers, these, these are 3, 5, 1, 3, 5. They are odd numbers. Okay. So, the next number would be half pi times 7. So, 7 pi by 2. So, to write an odd number, this is a general way to write an odd number. That is 2m plus, uh, 2m plus 1 where m is 0, 1, 2. So, let us understand how, how do they write that. If m is 0, this becomes half pi. If m is 1, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1, so this is 3 pi by 2. When m is 2, it will be 5 pi by 2. So, this is going clockwise. Now, if you go backwards, if you go backwards, you cos would be negative, sorry, cos would be 0 at minus pi by 2, minus 3 pi by 2, and so on. So, again, if you take that half out, you'll get negative odd numbers, that is negative 1, negative 3, and negative 5, and so on. So, in, in short, cos is negative at odd pi's, odd pi's, odd, half times, half pi times the number, which, which is an odd number. So, basically, this is an odd number integer. 2m plus 1 is an odd integer, positive or negative, including 0. So, okay, so yeah, <coughs> if you want to generalize that, generally, uh, if you want to uh, talk about both the part, the positive and the negative, you can say that is x, when, of course, cos, this is a situation, cos, if cos x is 0, x would be half pi times 2m plus 1, where m is an integer. So, you can put any integer here, positive or negative, and you will get one solution. Okay. So, we are using the same principle for this equation. So, this and this are the same. So, you can compare your x with theta plus alpha over 2. So, I am going to make the statement like this. Therefore, so if cos theta plus alpha over 2 is 0. We can see the same thing. Theta plus alpha over 2 is pi by 2 times 2m plus 1. Can you see the same thing? m is an integer. So, now you do a little of algebra. So, if you multiply both, if you multiply this with 2, it also multiply this with 2. So, this and this gets cancelled, this and this gets cancelled. So, I can say theta plus alpha is pi times 2m plus 1, where m is an integer. Okay, and that ultimately brings us to this, that theta is pi times 2m plus 1 minus alpha. You are taking out alpha from this side, so you have to take away alpha from this side. Okay, so what does this, this mean in a general sense? Now, we know that 2m plus 1 is an odd number. So, for this part of the equation, we can say now 2m plus 1 is an odd integer or odd number if m is an integer. If m is an integer, if you put any integer here, 2m plus 1 become an odd number or odd integer. Okay, so again, so if you generalize that, this, if you look at this, so this is an odd number times pi minus alpha. So, this is the first equation. So, we have solved the first branch of the equation. So, now we're going to talk about this. Okay, moving further. Okay, so when we talk about sine, this is a sine, this is, I copied and pasted from this, 
sine theta minus alpha over 2 is equal to 0. So, let us think about it. So, now we are thinking when would sine x become? So, say this is the graph of y is equal to sine x. So, we know that sine starts at 0, then you get a 0 at pi, then you get a 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. And if you go anti clockwise, you get at minus pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi, and so on. So, generalizing that, so let us put this away and think about this. So, we can say if sine x is equal to 0, x is 0 pi is 0, which is 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. And if you go anticlockwise, it is again 0 pi, minus pi, minus 2 pi, and so on. So, what type of numbers are they? Okay, so this is 1, 2, 3, and so on. So, we can say, uh, therefore, if you write both together, it is infinity, minus 2 pi, minus pi, 0 pi. So, here, if you look at these numbers, these are generalizing it, this becomes a integer. So, you can say, well, then that can be written as x is equal to m pi, where m is an integer. So, this is for sine x. If sine x is equal to 0, then we can say x is m pi and m is an integer. So, this is minus 1, this is 0, this is 1 pi, 2 pi and so on, 3 pi and so on. So, using the same, if sine x is equal to 0, if you can write this, we can say the same thing if sine x minus theta over 2 is because we know that sine theta minus alpha over 2 is equal to 0. So, using the same logic, I can say this would become m alpha, m pi, sorry, it should be m pi. It should become m pi, where m is an integer. Okay, so what will happen? So, if you multiply the same thing, if you multiply this side, so this is same for brackets, if you multiply this side with 2, it also multiply this side with 2 to cancel this 2. So, I can say theta minus alpha is 2 m pi, okay, and note that 2 m is an even integer. Okay, so generalizing, if you add pi, if if you add alpha to this side, it will add alpha to this side. So the final result is theta is 2m pi plus alpha. Okay, where theta is an e1 integer. So for cos, we got you have an odd number or odd integer times pi minus alpha, but for this part you are getting finally what? You are getting an odd, sorry, this has to be an even number. Okay, this, this is, this should be, for this part, this is an even number, so we will say this is an even number times pi. So, this is an even number, because when you are multiplying any integer with 2, that becomes an even integer. So, generally you can say it is an even integer times pi minus it should be plus alpha. Okay, I'm getting confused here. So, it is minus, I think I copied and pasted from cos. Okay, so this is, no, 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 this is right. Sorry, I'm getting confused here. So, this was, this was for equation 1. Sorry, this is integer. So, this is again odd integer. I was right here. This is equation 1. This is equation 1. I have copied and pasted from here. Okay, or the, from here, this is equation 1. Okay, I did not see that. This is equation 1. So, this is minus alpha. This is right. Sorry for the confusion. This is minus alpha. So, you got two situations. Equation 1 is theta is an odd integer times pi minus alpha. And the second equation tells me it is an even integer times pi plus alpha. So, how would you generalize both uh, now, we can say that is same as, if you want to combine this two, it is m pi, m pi is, uh, m pi stands for the integer, okay, so plus minus 1 times 
to the power m. Now this is something that you need to understand. Suppose m is, suppose if you put 1 here, if you put 1 here, that's an odd integer. Okay, so that is for this branch, that is pi minus, because this will become minus, it will be pi minus alpha. So the question is, it's, when it's an odd integer times pi, you have to do get minus. And if it's an even integer, you have to have plus. So this is, suppose if you put, say let me give you an example. Suppose if m is 1, m is 1, then theta would become 1 pi, so you can say the pi minus alpha. And if m is 2, it will become, theta would become 2 pi, 2 pi plus alpha. So if it's an even integer, you have to have plus alpha. So this is how you can do plus and minus of the same number by taking the same number. Okay, so let me t uh, do an example to illustrate how is this useful. So if the question is like this, say sine sine 2x is equal to, say, root 3 over 2. If the question is like this, we're going to use this formula. So now I can say, well, sine x, sine 2x is sine root 3 over 2. You should know is 60. So we are working this in. Uh, this in, uh, so let us write this. So it's pi by 3. That is doing in radians. So sine 60, so let me show you. Sine, sine pi by 3 is root 3 over 2. This is nothing but root 3 over 2, so you can go shift root 3 divided by 2 is the same number. Okay, so this I have written. So what was what was the equation? So the, they could write sine 2x as sine pi by 3. So the, we started like this. If sine theta is equal to sine alpha, okay, then theta is m pi, m pi plus negative 1 to the power m times alpha. So, using this formula, I can say 2x, your theta is, your 2x, so I can say 2x is m pi plus minus 1 to the power m times alpha is pi by 3. Okay, so yeah, so let us find all the answers between 0 to 360. So I can say x is m by 2 pi plus half times minus 1 to the power m times pi by 3. Okay, so this is, so let us simplify this. So x is equal to m over 2 pi. So this will become plus one sixth pi one sixth pi times minus one to the power m so this is the general solution so let's start with zero okay so what happens if m is zero this implies x1 we know that this has four solutions so this is if you put zero here so this will become zero uh, and this will become one so that is pi by 6. Okay, so that's the first answer. Okay, oh, now this is the first answer. X1 is pi by 6. If what happens if m is 1? m is 1, you go, you have to simply substitute m is 1. So x2 is half pi. m is 1, so half pi plus 1 sixth times pi over minus 1 to the power 1. So this can become hairy. So this is x2 is pi by 2. This is negative 1. Okay, so this is minus pi by 6, which is, uh, this is 3 pi by, 3 pi by 6 minus pi by 6, which is, so let me write the answer. So this is in 30 degrees. We'll check the answer in degrees. It's easier. So this is uh, pi by 6, 
So this is 2 pi by 6, which is uh, pi by 3, which is 60 degrees. So the next answer is 60 degree. So, okay, so what will be x? So when m is 2, this implies x3 would become uh, x3. So let's, so this is the formula. So we know the formula is uh, m by 2 pi. So in place of m, you can put 2. So this is pi minus, so this will become, when you put 2 here, this is becomes positive. So pi pi plus pi by 6. So pi is 180. That's 180. This is 180 plus 30, which is 210. Okay. And one more. So I think we'll get the answer. So when m is 3, this implies x4 is, you have to put 3 here. Yeah? So this is 3 pi by 3 pi by 2 minus because this will make this minus, minus pi by 6, minus pi by 6. 3 pi by 2, pi is 180, pi by 2 is 90. So 90 times 3 is 270, minus this is 30 degree. So minus 30 degree, which is 240 degrees. So we've got four solutions. So let us confirm our answer. So let us change graph yes and change the setting to degrees uh, where am i going yeah degrees and type in sine to x okay we need to change the scale shift v window we want a trick scale from 0 to 360 okay and this is a sine graph so you go g solve and i want to find the x calc when y is root 3 divided by 2. So the first answer is 30. That's what we got. So let me scroll up. Okay, so the first answer was, okay, let me scroll up. The first answer was 30. Okay, the first answer is 30. If you scroll, the next answer is 60. The next answer is 210. Okay, and the next answer is 240. You don't have any more answers. You got four answers. Hopefully this video has been helpful. This is one of the longest videos that I have made. See you in the next video.